Is the Labour Party dead? Well, if the failure of Keir Starmer to make a dent in the polls against the worst ever Tory government were not bad enough, if his constant purging were not undermining the party's credibility, if the rigging of delegates at Labour conference this year by purging as many left-wing ones as possible were not the height of anti-democratic actions, then the rule changes passed yesterday have destroyed any semblance of both electability and of socialism or left-wing politics ever regaining a foothold in the party. For those of us enthused by another future being possible, for the country to be run in the interests of the many, not the few, then Labour returning to Tory light, establishment friendly narratives, as has now happened, means for many of us, yes, it's over. And the worst part of it is that the, this party formed to represent workers by the trade union movement has been handed back to establishment figures by the underhand actions of a trade union. Last night at Labour conference, by a margin of 53 to 47, the nominations bar by which a Labour MP can stand to lead the party was raised from 10% to 20%. And the deciding delegate votes which handed this victory to Starmer after the left had fought so hard to block his desired return to the undemocratic electoral college system and away from the current one member, one vote system came from the largest trade union of them all, Unison. Unison has for a long time been run by right-wing elements. However, in recent elections, the left has been making inroads there, but sadly not enough to stop the right-wing management from instructing its delegates to back Starmer's rule changes in an underhand backroom deal. The union's leaders have in fact instructed their delegates to go against their own policy of upholding one member, one vote, which has been the union's position since 2018, setting, as their Labour Link Committee have put it, a very dangerous precedent for the union. When policy is decided, it is decided by their members. The management of Unison have just walked all over that, all to hand Starmer a very narrow victory, which if anyone wants to see a chink of light over, could be fairly easily overturned in future if Unison's right wingers finally get flushed out. I cannot imagine the damage to the reputation of Unison this has done. I know many Unison members are really very unhappy in my observations of social media. Many of them are considering joining another union now. And who can blame them? The rule changes themselves mean that Labour MPs have a disproportionate amount of power now in choosing future leadership candidates. If they'd been in place for the last Labour leadership election, then Keir Starmer would have been elected unopposed none of his rivals achieved 20%. If this had been the case in 2015, it would have been a runoff between Andy Burnham and Yvette Cooper. Neither Liz Kendall or Jeremy Corbyn would have made the ballot. Fundamentally, this rule change benefits white men to lead Labour. It is now harder for a woman to reach this threshold. It is harder for anyone from a black or minority ethnic background to make the cut, and it is all but impossible for a left-wing MP, as Corbyn did, to get on that ballot either. If anyone ever wanted to see Richard Bergen or Zara Sultana one day lead the party, then under these rules, that's a pipe dream. They will never get the nominations from fellow MPs. The majority right-wing parliamentary Labour Party, whose arrogance let them make the mistake of nominating Jeremy Corbyn back in 2015, will never make the same mistake again. This has not been a good conference for the left so far. After much purging, David Evans got ratified as General Secretary of the party. 40% of the, of the delegation opposed him, though, something normally waved through without incident, which is hardly a vote of confidence. He also now has new powers allowing him to refuse membership to anyone on whatever basis he likes. So expect left-wingers to continue to be purged whilst never being permitted to ever rejoin. Labour really is his plaything now. It is somewhat ironic that for a wing of the party so fond of calling the left a cult, that is pretty much what it has been reduced to. Challenge and criticism in the leadership is no longer permitted. That leadership is now refusing to back nationalisation of the big six energy companies, despite Starmer standing for leader and raising his hand when still running on a promise to do just that. His word, as all 10 of his leadership election pledges showed, is worthless. He pathetically tried rowing back on this on the Andrew Marr show and was widely ridiculed as a result. Conference delegates have voted to renationalize these energy firms despite that. But don't believe for one moment this leadership will take the slightest notice. Starmer has been a serial abstainer or a supporter of this government 
And the only times he has opposed it, he's had to be dragged kicking and screaming to do so. He has surrounded himself with the worst of the worst, from your Akehursts to your Mandelsons, in the hope he can resurrect the corpse of new labour. And by allowing the Murdoch scum paper and GB News into conference, all whilst blocking smaller independent media outlets, he's kissing all the right media arses to help swing them behind him, as they once did for Tony Blair and away from the Tories. Tony Blair put the party in debt. Tony Blair lost seats and vote share election on election whilst enjoying and taking advantage of the fact the Tory party were led by their weakest. Today, Labour is led by its weakest, a pathetic Blair wannabe without a unique idea, unique idea in his head, without charisma, without a prayer. His polling languishes once more despite Brexit screw-ups the country over, despite crushing poverty and energy prices, despite food price rises. And we see Johnson, who is overseeing this farce, extend his lead over Labour. Keir Starmer has lost the support of many members on the left. The expectation is left-wing unions, at least one in the Baker's Union, are likely to disaffiliate. I'm done. I stayed for as long as I felt there was a chance to turn things around, but that is over now. I refuse to give that party one penny more. My vote will go elsewhere. My boots will not be on the ground for them, as things stand. The disdain and rudeness shown to delegates from session chairs at conference show how little this party, under this right-wing establishment stooge regime, thinks of any of us. The worst example I've seen was Starmer himself completely ignoring a young Labour activist wanting to talk about climate change with him. He just kept walking, totally blanked her. They want our cash, but they only want to know us every five years when they need us to volunteer our time and effort to get them re-elected. But despite all of this, the left itself isn't dead. We're all still here. We will organize as we do so well, as we've done so well. We will rebuild since we are the ones with the ideas and the desire to change this country. What the vehicle to build around will be right now, I don't yet know. There are certainly options out there, but we need a united front if we're to make an impact and must not be afraid to challenge and put down the right in the strongest possible terms as we go forwards. But for anyone who has held out hope that Labour is that vehicle, I'm afraid that hope in the party is gone. The party was started by a care, it'll quite possibly end with one. But as a left-wing democratic socialist vehicle for change, the Labour Party now is definitely dead.